All right, guys, welcome back to the Unprofessional Kitchen, where I show you how to make great food in the average kitchen. So I noticed that I had all the ingredients left over from a previous night to make carbonara. So today, that's what we're going to be making. It's a classic Italian dish that really epitomizes quality of ingredients over quantity and masterful execution. And I'm going to be showing you step by step how to get it done. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time and let's get started. And as always, we're going to kickstart this video by going over the list of ingredients. First up, we have our egg yolks. You can use between four to five for this recipe, depending on the size of the eggs. So traditionally, carbonara usually calls for the use of guanciale, which is cured pig's jowl because of its high fat ratio. So if you can't get your hands on it, pancetta works as a great substitute, and I'm going to be using about 160 to 170 grams of it. Next, I'm going to use about three quarters of a cup of freshly grated pecorino romano. For the pasta, we're going to use dried pasta, not fresh, more specifically dried spaghetti enough for two people and then lastly we're going to use some salt and pepper however the salt is just for the cooking water you're going to get a decent amount of salt content from the cured meat so adding it to the sauce base is likely going to over salt the food so first i'm going to start by cutting out the pancetta you want to start by removing the skin as this is not going to render out at all if you try cooking it in terms of size honestly it's dealer's choice how large you want to go is up to you. Just make sure you're consistent for the sake of cooking time. I'm cutting them into layers and then batons so that I can dice them into nice bite-sized cubes. Okay, and next we're going to grate our cheese. And that's a pretty self-explanatory step. But one guide I will mention is if you're using a box grater like I am, just use the side that grates it very finely. This helps make sure it mixes together well with the base and melts into a nice cohesive sauce. And last step of the prep is to separate our egg yolks from our egg whites. And again, that's a pretty simple step, so I'll just zoom through it. As I mentioned earlier, if you're using smaller eggs or making larger serving sizes, you can add more egg yolks as desired, but for two people, five is plenty. Once the egg yolks are separated in a bowl, you can start mixing them together with a fork. And as you do, you can add in your cheese and keep mixing to incorporate everything together. Next, add in cracked black pepper to taste. And the final result will look something like this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the base for carbonara sauce. Now, the cooking process is one that's gonna happen pretty quickly. So you wanna make sure everything is prepared and ready to go at the right time. So to start, I'm going to put the pot of cooking water on high heat and season generously with kosher salt. While that's going, set your pan on a medium low heat and add in your pancetta to the cold pan. This detail is important because you want to make sure the fat has time to render out. While that's cooking, once your water is boiling, you can start cooking your pasta, but try to time it so that your pancetta is done cooking before your pasta is ready. We're going to go for al dente, which is about seven to eight minutes. You can see now the pancetta has gotten nice and crispy and the fat has rendered out. That's what you want to go for. So once that's done, you can use a slotted spoon to remove and set aside the pancetta. This next and final step is extremely important. Cut the heat completely and take your pan off the hot element. And as you do, add in your cooked pasta and then add the base for your sauce into the pan. Next, about half a ladle of the pasta cooking water is gonna go in, so don't throw that out. The starch will help everything emulsify into a creamy sauce. Start mixing everything together. The reason it's so important to cut the heat is because you want to emulsify the sauce using only the residual heat of the pan. If you keep the element on, you're likely gonna turn the egg mixture into scrambled eggs and overcook the pasta. Now all that's left for you to do is to plate up your carbonara. And as I mentioned, the cooking process is not long, but it is involved. However, the final product is absolutely worth the attention to detail put into making it. 
All right, and that about sums up how to make the classic carbonara at home. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you go out and try the recipe on your own. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and if you wanna see more content like this where I show you how to make great food in the average kitchen, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.